Invicta FC flyweight division. Sanctioned by the Missouri State Office of Athletics, the executive director in attendance, Tim Lukenhall. Your three judges scoring at cage side on the 10-point must system are Marcus Danforth, Henry Gary, and Ross Swanberg. And when the action begins inside the cage, referee in charge, Mike England. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Kansas City, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner standing 5 feet 6 inches tall. She weighed in the flyweight limit 126 pounds and in 14 bouts has a professional record that stands at 10 victories and 4 defeats. Fighting out of Italy, here is Mara Kunoichisi Romero Borella. And her opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A judo practitioner standing 5 feet 5 inches tall. She weighed it officially 125 and 3 quarter pounds and in 16 bouts has 11 victories and 5 defeats. Fighting out of Vladikavkaz, Russia, here is Milana Dojeva. Once again, referee Mike England with the final instructions. Okay, ladies, I gave you instructions in the dressing room. You have any questions? Any questions? Touch them up right here. God bless you. Come out fight. All right, it is our main event. Mara Romero Barella against Milana Dudaeva. Russia versus Italy here in Kansas City. TJ DeSantis, Julie Kedzie, Scottish Rite Temple, Invicta FC 24. Barella in the pink, Dudaeva in the black. And one thing to note about Judy Ava is that she said, I'm ready for a title shot already. Just so you know, I want that belt now. Very confident in this move down to flyweight. Judy Ava, a judoka. See if she punches her way into the clinch here early. Look, the Bantamweight champion of the world, Amanda Nunes, watching us tonight on UFC Fight Pass. Mara actually mentioned that Amanda is her favorite female fighter, which is a nice thing to see that camaraderie from the ATT members. You want to talk about a camp full of talented women, both Ioana Yu and Jacek, and Amanda Nunes fighting out of American Top Team. Camp of the champs. Uh, that was a nice, so we saw that, uh, we saw that was a nice tie-up there from, I'm going to say Milana so I don't mess up Dudieva. Um, but we saw the, the tie-up off of the straight rush that we saw on that beautiful takedown. Uh, Milana has a black belt in judo, and she's been able to employ it in the many fights where the opponent's much bigger than her. So with the opponent of a comparable size, I think it's going to pay dividends for her. Credit to Barella, able to get back to a half butterfly guard, but it is Dudaeva that is trying to pass now. Uh, Barella able to isolate that left leg of the Russian. She was, and we saw she was trying for an outside heel hook. Um, the Russian stepped over, switched. Uh, Mara tried with an inside heel hook and was just kicked out, and that, both are back on their feet now. That a bit disheartening for Dudaeva, who gets the judo throw but unable to really secure the position on the floor? Um, possibly, or it might just be she's getting more of a read on her opponent. What I'm really liking here is the discipline for striking in her past strikes. And I even said this in the intro, we see her ringing these big overhand shots. And, well, there's a there's one. But she set it up. Yeah, she set it up uh, pretty well. Yeah, uh, there's where Mara's going to have the advantage of those inside shots. When something is winged over, her right hand is going to land beautifully. She's got longer arms and longer reach and can really hit a little bit more effectively on um, swinging attacks. Dudaeva really measuring it. Gloria punching. I mean, we have seen from Mara, though, she's content to fight with her back in the cage a lot. That doesn't do well for MMA scoring. Staying off of the cage is going to be a better strategy for her, even if her attacks are more effective off the cage. You know, you have to think about what the judges think. Nice right hand. Gorilla, you know, managing that range quite well, staying at the end uh, of Dudaeva's punches and, and countering. You gotta make sure she doesn't let uh, Dudaeva punch her way back in that clinch, though. This is true, and she's gonna find the counter when uh, Dudaeva reaches for those big shots. So that left hand will drop just slightly. There'll be that opening there for a right hand when she tries to wing it. She's doing a nice job of cutting off the cage, though, really keeping uh, Mara defensive. 
oh, right nice hand to the body, shot. and then Varela counter with the right hand. You get so excited when they hit each other, TJ. It's mixed martial arts. It happens from time to time, right? Love all the tweets on Twitter tonight. Hashtag InvictaFC24 at TJ DeSantis at Tools K underscore fighter. Bella in on a takedown. That was a, kind of a long range single leg attempt. She actually had the leg tied up. Full guillotine very nicely tied up there. Bella uh, in some trouble. Looked like she was trying to, trying to get out of this. Duda Eva really cranking it. And from here, she needs to be fighting her hands. Uh, putting actually somebody against the cage on that guillotine is not necessarily, it's kind of almost not strategic, but getting to the ground there where you have room to stretch out is good. I think that there's not a lot of danger now for Mara. She is in Ooh. half guard, but she needs to keep pressure right there on the on the head and fight hands with her right hand. Very uncomfortable is Barella, but as you mentioned, in that half, what would you like to see Moana do? Do you need her to regard or give up on this choke? Yes, absolutely give up on the choke regard, but use that positioning to trap her, to try to get to your feet or actually to try to, yeah, I think regard is actually the best position here, or a sweep. Uh, a butterfly hook from that position would be a very nice thing to do. Now she's not really in a position where she can do this. She still has a head tied up, but I do believe that it's not really effective with choking because of the leverage there. It's mostly just kind of grabbing. Less than 30 seconds here for these ladies to work on the floor. It's funny that her neck is still in there that tight. She really can use this leverage to get out. Um, pushing on the head is an option right there, too. Um, wow, that must be a grip on the, from the Russian right there. Good day. We're throwing some knees up from the bottom there. Nothing too hard, but knees nonetheless. Now five minutes in the books between these two fighters. Barella able to get the takedown late, but, uh, you know, had to weather that choke, and Duda Eva able to play her game offensively uh, on the floor, but, you know, also doing well on the feet. She, she was doing well on the feet, you know, and Duda Eva, like I said, there was a very, a more measured approach from her than we've seen in the past from some of her fight footage. I will say this about that standing guillotine attempt. Turning Morel, uh, excuse me, Mara Romero Borello, I'm going to get it right, TJ, turning her back onto the cage when Duda Eva actually had more leverage with her back on the cage, with her own back on the cage, was a a little bit um, an odd strategy. Here's that nice hip toss early in the round uh, where we saw Milena get uh, some nice control and transitioning. Uh, she's, you know, she kind of advances position here. And then right here, we're seeing that single leg attempt that ended up getting her tied up in this guillotine. Now, it's like no, it's a no hand guillotine. Like that's a really tight thing. I would like to see her stay tied up actually against the fence for that. I think she might have been able to get more leverage and extension there. I'm sure out there you want to correct me and go ahead and tweet at me, you know, at Jules K underscore fighter, at Invicta FC 24, and tell me how to do a guillotine. Touch of gloves here, round number two, our main event underway. Milana Dudaev in the black, Mara Romero Barella in the pink. Watch out for Romero Barella's right hand. That thing is very sharp and very fast, and it's pinpoint the way it can hit. Kick to the lead leg there of the Russian by the Italian. Tomorrow at a special time, the UFC is live from Glasgow, Scotland, as Iceland's Gunnar Nelson and Argentina's Santiago Ponzinibbio meet in a welterweight battle. Plus, Joanne Calderwood faces the undefeated Cynthia Calvillo. UFC Fight Night on FS1 tomorrow at 3 in the East, with prelims starting at UFC Fight Pass at noon. Very nice tie-up there from the Russian with double underhooks, and we can see the Italian reaching over and then not, oh, she's reaching over the head. Oh, that's that's one of those things we watch for. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Sometimes it works if you have nice judo tosses, but a lot of the time it gives up the back. It's not effective for her in this case, but she's getting some punches over there. However, Milana's shot and just the way she entered in on that was beautifully timed, and she really has had control of this round so much in her approach and now in the tie-up. Now she's reaching around the head. It's head reach city. Um, just like Armbar City earlier, I guess. And we see the Italian trying kind of to get down lower, possibly for a double leg attempt, possibly just to get a better positioning. There's a nice little trip there. And that was the cage fighting aspect of mixed martial arts right there. Now Barella in control on top, trying to isolate that right arm. Nicely done here. Nice position secured by Barella, but 
Duda Ava able to uh, reverse fortune a little bit. She is, and this is where I said, this is where Duda Ava needs to stay scrambly and put that word in your lexicon of, of, of like what you need to think about. When you're on the bottom, you can't let yourself get flattened out. It's a very dangerous thing to do, and we've seen that in past fights. Whether or not that's technique or that's just the size of her opponents, it's not a position that she's done well or she's recovered from. Now we see Mara trying to get her there, trying to flatten her out, especially parallel to the cage so she can get some ground and pound in there. Um, she's a little tall, though. She's letting herself get tall, and you can see uh, Mara's reaching for a leg lock there. She's trying to find a way up from there. Excuse me. Helena was reaching for a leg lock. Fence played a factor in there. It looked like Judah Ava was able to really make some space, and, and Rose backpedaling, but uh, kind of saved by the fence there. Yeah, that's one of the kind of the beauties and the joys of cage fighting, using that for position. Nice uh, arm triangle attempt there, but not in the right position for Varela to really secure it. But the arm was isolated of Judah Ava for a brief moment. In half is the attempt. We see it's kind of hard from this positioning right now. We can't see if there's a lot of damage happening in the head there. We do see her trying to prevent those strikes. Um, Milana trying to prevent those strikes with her left arm, gripping the bicep sometimes of, of the right arm of Mara, tying it up, gripping it, and kind of pushing against it. She's also moving her legs back and forth in her half guard, trying not to stay on one or, or, or in flat. She's going to be on one edge or another. But she is eating some pretty hard shots there from the Italian. Varela really making a nice strategy change here, getting this takedown, and this is a much more dominant round by her than Dudaeva's first round. And this is where we do want to see uh, Varela if she can employ staying patient on the top, not rolling off for sudden submissions, and kind of setting them up by injuring her opponent first, by making her eat some leather, eat some elbows before she rolls off. Here she seems content to just be striking, but she's getting her hands tied up quite a bit by the Russian. 70 seconds remain here in round number two. Mara Romero Varela on top of Milana Dudaeva. It will clear the legs now inside. You can see, yeah, you can see Dudaeva trying to insert that leg, trying to get back in, and she's using a left butterfly hook to try and elevate the pressure in the hip of Mara so that she can change her positioning and possibly move to a full guard. Um, she's still caught in half guard. Her right leg is still underneath, but she is scrambling. She's letting her legs go back and forth, and that's what she needs to do to stay in motion and not be flat enough for a significant strike to hit. A scrambly fight, just like you ordered. Yeah, I, I love me some scrambles, TJ. I think that's when we see the best in fighting and the most unexpected moments in fighting. Less than 30 seconds here in round number two. Full guard here for Judaeva. Now her head is down and her rear end is up, and that's not necessarily great in certain guard positions. Um, but she is able to pass. You know, she's controlling the feet to get past the guard of, of Judaeva. Some up kicks, up kicks from the Russian there. She inserted herself back into the guard. Interesting strategy. Ten minutes in the books between Judaeva and Romero Varela. A you know, solid round for the Italian to come back out and sort of steal the momentum of this fight. We go into the final five minutes, a very important round number three coming up. It was a solid round. It was an intelligent round. What she was doing on the ground was smart, TJ. You know, um, maybe my critique with that guillotine and what, she, what was happening earlier, you know, doesn't stand to reason with what the adjustment she's made here now because I think she was making some very smart choices is on the ground, staying aware of the Russians' movement, staying on top, getting her shots in, and always being ready to move and readjust. If you're in the corner of either of these ladies, what do you tell them? Well, I can't speak Russian or Italian, so I'm not sure. Uh, but at this point, for Dudaev, I would say you've got to tie her up. You've got to get her on her back. You've got to go for some kind of finish because we don't know how they scored the first round. And if you know you lost the second round and you're not sure about the first, you've got to go for broke. Second time, you know, and again, if you go in, you know you've won a second round and you don't know what happened with first, you've got to go for a finish. I think third rounds are all about finishes when it's tied up one and one. So what they've got to both do is they've got to be patient, but they've also got to just kind of pick up the tempo when it comes to strikes and work for harder finishes. Lump on the forehead there of Dudaeva. She was feeling it. Uh, I mean, she's she's worse for the wear a little bit after that second round. We'll see what happens here in round number three. When you see a fighter shake out their arms like that sometimes, um, it's an indication that either they're tired or they're kind of like they had a little bit of adrenaline like grip going on. And that can happen after grappling exchanges where you're just getting a little bit tired of holding. Or you're trying to pump yourself back up. It's like, okay, my hands are ready. Um, uh, what is it? Small muscle fibers get together like all the little muscles get ready to go and fire off. 
Um, Mara seems very composed right here, and I'm really appreciative of the lateral motion we're seeing from her. It's not what we've seen in many past fights. She's not backing right up to the cage. Now, she read that overhand beautifully and came with her own shot. TJ, I'll let you do the play-by-play -play here. I just get excited. We did it quite well, but now we see Milana Dudaeva trying to get that hip toss that she had earlier in the fight, but it's Romero Barella able to push the Russian against the fence. You know, when I, oh, very nice trip there. And when fighting judokas, um, I think really you have to be aware of what's happening with your hands, their head, and their hips. In all fights you do, but especially, you know, fighting a judoka of this level, you really have to be aware of that they're going to grab at your head, they're going to grab at things and try to flip you, turn your back. Scrambly's a thing. See, you have to get Scrambly to escape Armbar City and earn the right to enter the Reach City. I don't know what that means, but I'm 100% behind that. All right. Appreciate there we you go. all joining us on <laughs> UFC Fight Pass City. Mara Romero Varela on top of Milana Dudaeva. See, oh, wow, Armbar are coming for Varela, but. Uh, and see, what we saw in that was. Uh, Somebody trying to give up top position. Now we saw uh, Mara, uh, or excuse me, Milana climbing her legs and using the cage, and that's one of the things. She's now trying to climb over and achieve her own Ooh. arm bar in the Italian. Nicely done, but it is Barella that's able to clear the arm. Yeah, the elbow is out there, but now she just kind of inserted herself into a triangle. Um, she's defending. Oh, arm is triangle extended arm too. Arm coming here. The Russian trying to torque the Italian's arm, Barella. Trying to clear, but still caught in that triangle. Now, I don't know how tight that is, TJ, and she's doing a nice job connecting her hands behind the back and getting that slam. Sometimes when you slam somebody in a triangle, it just makes it tighter on you. But because of her hand position, she did quite well there. She's eating shots, though, and um, that can make it a little bit harder to maintain your composure here. Oh, when she lets that, um, that right arm go across the body, though, it puts her in more danger, and she really kind of needs to be careful of that. Maybe she just doesn't feel threatened by it, but those are dangerous positions. Her head is out now and her arm. And um, I would say if she gets mount again to maybe work more for the striking. I like the way she steps her knee over the, the hand. Um, very, very technical is Barilla on top here and able to isolate that arm. We'll see if she can rain down some punches or elbows as Duda Eva is largely defense, uh, defenseless with that arm trap. She is, but again, Mara is not using um, the cage to her advantage. She's actually allowing Milana to have that cage space to climb her legs. It's a dangerous thing to do when you're, I believe she's trying for a key lock right there, but I can't quite see the hand positioning. Um, can you see where, oh yeah, the elbow is being torqued up, and you can see uh, Milana is using Ooh. her knees to try and climb over. Nice little knee to the head that's probably illegal. I don't know if that was intentional. Yeah, it but wasn't it, called. I mean, if you get away with it, the referee doesn't call it, it's legal. And her arm is out, so uh, yeah, she's not in danger of being locked now. Um, but she is using the fence to her advantage to try and create leverage. That's a very cool thing. Fighters need to be savvy of that when they're in top position, that the fence can work against them. Top position fighters need to try to be away from the fence a lot of the time. Mara Romero Morella on top of Milana Dudaeva. 70 seconds left in this very important third and final round. Trying to step over to take mount, still caught in the call it a quarter guard. Look at the way uh, Mara is climbing her arm up there, her right arm. She has a little finger climb. It's a nice way to escape your arm when somebody's trapping it from bottom position. It extends their shoulder so that they can't really get, and you also have a base there in case they try to move. That's smart fighting right there. I go back and forth, I was like, that's a weird choice. That's smart fighting. That's I guess that's all MMA. People have such interesting styles, TJ. Duda Ava trying to utilize that fence, trying to get scrambly. Scramble City in Kansas City. Scramble City in Kansas City, and she needs that big kick off to try and get out the back door right there. Oh, she used her legs to get free. Very nicely done by the Russian. Trying to run coming here for the Italian. Milana Dudaeva needs to be careful here. And she's standing right up in that, giving up almost her positioning. I felt some kicking happening there, possibly illegally, but I guess it's not hitting the head quite yet. And the referee's not saying anything. Well, Punches to the body. What a great way to end this fight. Trying to torque the arm is Barella, but time runs out. You wanted a scrambly fight. You got a scrambly fight. I think we, I think that made my year right there, TJ. That makes me happier than happy to see that many scrambles and turnovers and, and interesting choices from fighters. Like, that was very exciting. And for those of you at home who maybe don't know what's happening in all of these fights, rewatch this fight. See what's going on with their body movements, especially when they're tied up and trying to escape. Um, really, both of these fighters were very evenly matched. My hat's off.
to Caitlin Young for this one. This is a good fight. Two debuting fighters in our main event, both nice additions to this flyweight roster. And as you said, matched up very evenly, very good fight. I, I can't wait to see either of these ladies going forward. Happy to have them here at Invicta. And really, while it was a, a, a scrambly fight, it was also a technical fight and a, a lot to take away from this. A technical fight and a fight out there for you fans who maybe weren't actually aware of Mauro Romero Borello. Um, let's look at some of the things that were happening here with that cage. I was obsessed with that a little bit. But look at the way she bounced off, kicked her legs over the top, got to top position, and immediately those long legs of the Italian fighter tied her right into that triangle. But neither one wanted to give up when she tipped her over. And we see this, uh, basically, we see the Russian fighter trying to escape by inserting her legs, punching the ribs, inserting that right leg again, trying to pull the arm off so that she won't get full extension of that arm. Um, interesting armbar defense. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, but I think there was enough time left in the round for uh, for the Italian to, uh, I think, claim victory in this fight. We will find out what the judges say, but, uh, you know, a breakout performance for Barella, win or lose. Milana Dudaeva did a lot to show us what she feels like in her skin at 125. I mean, again, there's going to be a winner and a loser, but a, a lot for both ladies to take away from their performance. Absolutely, and especially for being put in the main event on such short notice. Like, they really prove themselves to be main event worthy fighters. Judges have tallied their tens and nines to find out who is our winner. We throw it to Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Marcus Stanforth has it 30-27. Romero Borella. Henry Gary, 29-28. Dujeva. Ross Swanberg has it 29-28 for your winner by split decision. Mara Kunoichisi Romero Borella. Mara Romero Borella with the biggest win of her career. She will talk about it with our very own Laura Sanko. All right, I am here with our winner, Mara Romero Borella. Oh my goodness, what a performance! How good does it feel to be the first Italian fighter? I know you also represent, re represent Honduras. How good does that feel to be doing this on this stage? Que performance is espetacular. O que se sente sendo a primeira italiana e a primeira hondurinha em invicta? Sou muito, 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 muito feliz. Nada. Para isso, sou muito feliz por ser a primeira italo-hondurinha. E que dire, agora sou só feliz. Grazie. I'm extremely happy to be the first Italian Honduran uh, female fighter in, in Invicta. Right now, I'm just so happy. Thank you so much, everybody. In that first round, you shot in for a single leg, and she was able to snatch up a guillotine. How close was that choke? No, primeiro round, ela pôde encaixar uma guillotina. Quanto estava close? É, não sei, um pouco. Não só um pouco. Era o que usava, o respirato. Passa la volta a respirare, calma, tranquilla. Uh, it, was, it was a little close, it was tight, uh, but then after I took, him down, took her down, uh, I heard my corner saying, calm down, breathe, it's going to get better. So it, 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 the choke was uh, um, warning yourself out, and then I was out. Potentially close first round, but you really turned it on in the second and third round. What adjustments did you and your corner make coming into the second round that allowed you to really turn the tide of the fight? No primeiro round é muito muito duro. O que o que você e seu os seus treinadores falaram para para mudar no segundo e no terceiro round? Bem, primo, respira tranquila, de trabalhar. Sulla, girare sulla no, mia destra e poi in verità mi ricordo solo i comandi da fare e in questo momento non, non me li ricordo um, I, I, I remember hearing they say uh, calm down, breathe um, she just have the right hand take it a single leg again take her down, get her off the cage and that's what I remember Congratulations. Thank Go you. enjoy your victory. Ladies and gentlemen, Mara Romero Borella. A hard-fought victory for the Italian. 
Mara Romero Barella. She gets it done via decision over the UFC veteran turned flyweight. Milana Dudaeva, Julie, a very technical and fun fight. And uh, she did what she needed to do, changing her game plan over the course of 15 minutes to earn the decision. She did, TJ. I'm very impressed with what she accomplished there, especially, you know, taking down um, a decorated judoka and really doing, implementing a game plan that was attrition and uh, scrambles.